the idea that in this country we are going to ankle tag someone who has not been convicted in a court of law. I mean, I tell you what, those Chinese in their embassy will be watching this very closely at the moment. They might actually be applying for some of this stuff. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Over the past few days, I've been accused of being tired, emotional, erratic. And just to put the record straight, Madam Deputy Speaker, I am all those things (laughs) and more. And more. I just want to be clear. I absolutely, unlike some members in this chamber, have no time for those people that that block roads, throw soup, make a general nuisance of themselves. I I mean, they are really actually agents against their own interests as they repel normal, ordinary people. But having said that, having said that, serious disruption, prevention orders are not the answer. They leave me absolutely cold. In fact, I go as far as to say they are appalling, absolutely appalling, because there are plenty, there are plenty of existing laws that can be utilised to deal with people who specialise in making other people's lives miserable. And I know there is a convention here that we don't read lists, but I hope, Madam Deputy Speaker, I can read a very short list just to set out the laws that already exist that have been covered by colleagues. Obstructing a police officer, Police Act 1996. Obstructing a highway, Highways Act 1980. Obstructing an engine, Malicious Damage Act 1861. And we all remember that one, don't we? Endangering road users, Road Traffic Act 1988, Aggravated Trespass, Criminal Justice Act and Public Order Act 1994, Criminal Damage, Criminal Damage Act 1971, Public Nuisance, the PCSC Act 2022. There are also other laws. There's the Public Order Act of 1986 that allows police officers to ban or place conditions on protest. So the, the government's attraction to serious disruption prevention orders, they are such a mouthful to say, demonstrates our own impotence as legislators and really the impotence of the police as law enforcers to get to grips with the laws already in place and enforce them. Because this is sort of, this is what we do now in politics. We sort of have these machismo laws where something must be done. So we go out and do it. And and that makes a good headline in the Telegraph and Times, but we do it and then very little happens. Or if it does happen, it is way over the top. I give way. I'm I'm most grateful to my uh, honourable friend for for giving way. Uh, And he he rightly compliments the police for routinely arresting and charging those who are responsible for uh, wrongdoing. But would he agree with me that it's not an acceptable circumstance where 460 individuals have been arrested a total of 910 times for Just Stop Oil? protests, that there is a point of accumulation here which is difficult, which we have to accept. So, so, so the Minister, I, I, I thank the Minister for his in, intervention because I'm now warming to my task here uh, to, 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 to nail a stake through the heart of this nonsense that we're debating. Because let's be absolutely, it is absolute nonsense, Minister, um, and as the Minister said from a sedentary position for the benefit of Hansard. Um, I, w- I, would just, I would just say this. The idea that in this country we are going to ankle tag someone who has not been convicted in a court of law. I mean, I tell you what, those Chinese in their embassy will be watching this very closely at the moment. They might actually be applying for some of this stuff when we pass it in this place, as I suspect we will. So I just, I just want to say this to the Minister. I warned, and now I am getting tired and emotional, I warned during the COVID lockdowns when we banned protest that we would get to this point. That once the government, politicians were emboldened with placing restrictions on a right and turning it into a freedom, they would not stop. All I will say is this is as unconservative as our budget of a few weeks ago. This is not what the Conservative Party does. We believe in proportionate laws like we used to believe in sound money. So I will be voting against this. I will be joining with honourable members across the House to vote against this piece of legislation. As I said a moment ago, Madam Deputy Speaker, I warned over a pint of milk, a metaphor I used, that our 
right to protest was being eroded away, and now we are crying over spilt milk. Um, there has been a 40-year campaign against Heathrow expansion in my constituency, particularly about the th- against the third runway. 4,000 homes, according to the airport itself, will be either demolished or rendered unlivable as a result of air and noise pollution. 10,000 people losing their homes. There has been a history of peaceful protest against this by my local constituents. Those c- protests have involved demonstrating noises, noisily, linking arms, marching, sitting down to block the roads into Heathrow, blocking the tunnel into Heathrow as well. They have involved camping in the local field with climate camp, and yes, they have involved occupy, uh, the training of locking it locking on to ensure that people, when, if their home is threatened with demolition, that they will lock themselves onto the homes themselves. And yes, um, the existing law has been used against my constituents, um, and people have taken it on the chin. The existing law has proved actually effective in many ways in ensuring that people understand the law and know when they cross the limits of the law. And I just remind um, honourable mem- members as well that there is very specific laws relating to airports as well at the moment. And do you know what's been demonstrated by this campaigning? It's demonstrated to me how the democratic process, both outside of Parliament and inside of Parliament, actually works effectively. Because this campaign was successful. It persuaded um, the Conservative Party to change its policy. Um, The then leader of the Conservative Party, Mr Cameron, actually said no ifs, no buts, no third wrong way. We were disappointed that he then caveated that later, that this commitment would only last for one parliament. But nevertheless, it demonstrated how a peaceful demonstration as a result of these campaigns actually did change government policy. And it did so, I think, it it actually reinforced people's appreciation of our democratic system. Mm -hmm. Now, that threat of the third runway has not gone away. In fact, now the new discussions that are taking place on a number of benches actually means actually the campaign now is planning a new wave to protect their homes. And that's gone beyond a NIMBY campaign because now it's also about tackling the climate emergency that's caused by the climate change that's taking place now. Certainly. Uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, I'm grateful to the Honourable Gentleman for giving way, and I entirely share his commitment and opposition to a third runway at Heathrow, but would he acknowledge that the reason the campaign against that has succeeded has been uh, the intelligent and appropriate use of the legal process with a series of injunctions and challenges brought by the London Borough of Hillingdon rather than protest that's taken place around Heathrow Airport itself? I agree with him to a certain extent. I congratulate Hillingdon Council. We've worked on a cross-party basis, and I commend the Council for the work they've done with other local authorities as well, of all political parties. But actually, I don't think that the legal process has been sufficient. What changed the minds of the politicians was the mobilisation of mass demonstrations, mass political supports, that then changed the minds of David Cameron himself and the Conservative Party. And remember, I've been campaigning on that issue for 30 years before that, before we got any shift in policy itself. And what these campaigns are about is the residents are simply trying to protect their homes, their communities and their way of life. And now, as a result of this legislation, potentially they could be criminalised because of the specifics of this legislation. In fact, this legislation could be designed almost specifically to prevent campaigning in my constituency against the third runway. Why? Because our campaign is... It's a protest associated with national infrastructure, as set out in the legislative proposals. It's specific to airports, as identified in legislation. The campaign involves protests which are aimed at serious disruption, because we block roads entering into the airport, and virtually all the the roads around the particular villages in my constituency go to the airport. And yes, we have blocked the tunnel, at Heathrow itself. We have been involved in locking on of arms linking and the occupation of land and and property. 
Now, I see in the legislation there's a, a defence of reasonable excuse. I just ask the question, is protecting one's home and one's community a reasonable excuse under this legislation? So, because now, under this legislation, for seeking to protect their homes and to, for seeking to persuade governments and political parties to change policy, my constituents will now face arrest, fines unlimited, imprisonment up to 51 weeks, tagging, restrictions on their ability to attend other forms of protest, surveillance, and yes, stop and search without suspicion. And the legislation does degenerate into elements of farce as well, because in my constituency, anyone wandering off, for example, to the Harmersworth allotments with a spade can actually also be under potential of arrest for going carrying. So I think there are, when we legislate like this, there are foreseen consequences and sometimes unforeseen consequences. I think there are foreseen consequences here which are <coughs> dangerous because the good and responsible and concerned citizens who are exercising in my constituency their time-honoured rights of expression, assembly and protest are likely to be criminalised by this legislation if it goes through. Um, will it intimidate them? Yes, it will. Will it deter them? No, it won't. So that's why I think these amendments that have been put in place before us today need to be supported. I believe the legislation itself flies in the face of the democratic rights and processes that we've held dear and which actually have proved successful in holding governments to account and restraining the power of the state. And that's why I believe these amendments are so critical, failing that the bill should be opposed. Thank you, Madam.